for uh, today's uh, discussion we'll be talking about uh, moment of inertia of the flywheel okay so this is our experiment number 3 and uh, before we talk about flywheel i just want to talk to you about uh, how uh, a vehicle or a car really works okay there is something called drive train in a vehicle okay and essentially these are components that are delivering power to your uh, driving vehicle okay so we have uh, for example here in this instance you can see um, your uh, uh, basically your pistons okay and uh, what is happening here is uh, you have something called uh, this uh, crankshaft okay and these uh, pistons are moving and they are uh, connected to this crankshaft okay and a crankshaft is uh, a component that is uh, basically converting the linear motion of these pistons into rotational motion okay so uh, in your typical uh, vehicle a car what we have is we have the engine and the engines are doing you know two stroke four stroke cycle and uh, from that uh, cycle power is generated and that power is uh, generated and it has to be transferred to the transmission okay so the way the transmission happens is these pistons that are moving they have to be connected to a crankshaft and here your linear motion will get converted into rotational motion okay now once this crankshaft has started rotating now we have to connect this crankshaft eventually to the uh, wheels of the car so that they will start rotating okay so how do we do that so there are two methods either you have manual uh, transmission or you have uh, automatic transmission right so in the manual transmission what we have is something called a flywheel okay and in automatic transmission the way the crankshaft is connected to the wheels is through the torque converter okay so you can see an example of a torque converter here it works on fluids uh, but uh, we want to focus more on the flywheel aspect okay so let's see what a flywheel can actually do again the way the power is transferred from the crankshaft to the vehicles is through a flywheel in a manual transmission okay now remember the engine is producing some power so there is uh, you know the cycle uh, two stroke or four stroke so it is basically not a continuous production of power okay when the engine is producing some uh, energy so to make it much more continuous that the car doesn't feel the you know uh, jerky motion you have something called a flywheel that is present in your car okay now uh, you can just imagine you know like you are uh, riding a bicycle and uh, you are riding a bicycle up the hill right so every time you are trying to rotate the uh, the pedal right you will go uh, to a certain extent and then the uh, you know you will try to stop so there will be some resistance to motion then you have to again apply some power and then you will uh, go a certain distance then again the uh, uh, your bicycle will try to stop so that is like a jerky motion right when you are trying to ride a bicycle up a hill okay similarly the car will also do that okay so to avoid that what you have is a flywheel and this flywheel what it can do it can uh, have some uh, uh, kinetic energy stored in uh, it okay so that when we require it can deliver that uh, energy to um, your uh, transmission and the car can run smoothly okay so in your car what happens is there is a clutch system right so every time you have to change gear or something you use a clutch right so when this clutch is through which your flywheel is connected to your transmission okay so every time we press the clutch in the car basically this flywheel gets disconnected from the transmission and so uh, you know if you press a clutch you can know you cannot feel the power in the car okay and every time you release the clutch this flywheel will get connected to your uh, transmission and whatever uh, accelerator you are giving whatever power you are giving will be transferred to your uh, car wheels okay so that is essentially how it is working right so this flywheel connects your engine with the transmission okay and it do, does that through this clutch system okay and uh, just to cut the whole story short basically it allows you to have a very smooth and efficient driving uh, 
uh, and not a jerky motion when you're driving a car okay so uh, in this uh, week's lab we are trying to determine the moment of inertia of a flywheel okay so our flywheel is a circular disk like this okay so this is our flywheel okay and uh, it is uh, connected to this axle okay so this is our axle okay so when the flywheel will rotate the axle will rotate okay so what we'll do is uh, we'll connect some uh, mass to a string and the string will be wound up on this axle okay and we will let the mass drop from certain height okay so we have to measure the height through which it is dropped and uh, initially whatever is the potential energy that is stored in this mass and that will get converted into, into kinetic energy of this uh, mass and it will get converted into kinetic energy of the flywheel and there will be some friction present in the system as well okay so uh, uh, that is essentially what you're doing in the experiment okay so you're just uh, using different masses and letting them draw from certain height and uh, you're trying to record the number of rotations that this flywheel will do okay now uh, just to give you an idea because we haven't discussed it in class the moment of inertia uh, is related to your concept of uh, inertial mass right so when we were trying to do uh, linear or translation motion we had uh, your uh, inertia present in the system that is the resistance to motion okay now the same thing when an object is doing rotational motion there is some resistance to rotational motion and that is what your moment of inertia is telling you okay you have n which is the number of rotations of the flywheel okay and m is the mass of whatever is hanging and then you're dropping okay g is the gravity if you're doing on earth it's the gravitational constant of the earth okay and um, h is the height from which you're dropping the mass okay now this r r is this radius of this um, axle okay so you have to measure the radius of the axle and uh, omega is uh, again the angular velocity you can find by 4 pi n by t okay and uh, this little n is the number of windings of the string on the axle okay so initially the string has to be wound on the axle and then uh, we will let it go okay so uh, there are uh, two videos that will help you accomplish this task okay now there is uh, one um, video okay that describes the uh, entire components of the uh, equipment uh, that are present in the lab it shows how to do the experiment as well and uh, it also shows you how to do the calculations okay so there is one um, video uh, given okay uh, the second video is present uh, introductory lab videos it tells you how to use the um, online simulator okay which is uh, we are going to do on amrita website okay so you have to create your account and uh, perform this experiment so it's uh, free of cost um, uh, the amrita website to do the experiments okay so how to do the registration everything is given in this video okay so these two videos you will have to watch to uh, perform the experiment okay and presentation is already there in the presentation on the last slide you will find uh, the uh, link of uh, where to do the experiment okay so this is your amrita website okay this is your simulator okay and uh, it shows you the flywheel and uh, basically let me just show you uh, in the simulator so we have some mass here so uh, if i just say release fly uh, release flywheel this mass is getting dropped and the flywheel is rotating okay and uh, you are getting the timer that is moving and here you can see the number of rotations that uh, are visible of this flywheel okay so after a, a certain point of time you can just uh, stop this flywheel so let's say hold flywheel so you, uh, for 23.88 seconds you have certain number of rotations of the flywheel 3.24 and you can record that in your table okay so the table looks something like this it is uh, available in your manual okay and uh, again one two three uh, doesn't mean that you have to only take three readings it is just a descriptive table so you can take more readings the more readings you take the better uh, result you will get okay and uh, for every run that you are set, uh, set, you're doing that means for every mass setting that you're doing the run you should do it twice so that you can average them okay so you will uh, do run one and run two at each mass setting 
and um, uh, you can keep the height constant okay and uh, you can measure the rotations of the flywheel and certain time okay and then take the averaging okay now when you uh, record your data you have to record it in your table here okay and from the table here you have to calculate your i okay so don't just press the button online and uh, record the value of i okay so so like i mentioned this is the link to the simulator it is uh, available on the last uh, slide of your presentation okay self evaluation uh, quiz that uh, one can do okay so what you will have to do is after you read the theory and the procedure you will have to uh, attempt this uh, quiz online okay and once you have all the answers correct you take a snapshot of the screen and put it along with your report and uh, remember there might be some questions in the end you have to attempt okay so like um, last week uh, i had done the, i will create a assignment here which will be lab assignment 3 and uh, under the lab assignment 3 you can go ahead and make your submission okay